Uh, this is uh, in uh, these animals are in uh, uh, two sets, uh, two different sets. They have the domestic uh, 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 farm animals and stuff like that. And you have the wild, Wesiak. The Wesiak, they're the Wakarnak. Uh, Wakarnak well, is supposed to be that H, is supposed to be a K. And I, I overlooked it when I was correcting this. Um, Wakarnak is an uh, animal, a uh, farm animal. Wakarnak means farm animal. Uh, but uh, the Wakarn is also a Wesi. It's a way of seeing first, it's an animal. And uh, when it's being raised on a farm or in a home, it becomes a wakan. Wakan. So the first uh, the first one we're going to look at is the domestic. Bejike. Cow. Bejgonji. And the easy way to remember the word Bejgonji. Bejgonji is... It, it literally means uh, an animal with one nail. The horse has only one nail on each leg. Bejik gonji. It usually it comes from the word bejik kanji. Bejik kanji, one nail. And uh, you smooth it out because it's going to be the name of an animal, so it's bejik gonji. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, and most of the time you can say, okay, I got to remember what uh, what it means so that I'll know exactly what it is. Nemosh. Uh, if it was a little doggy, it would be Nemos. How do you spell that? Nemos, uh, it's uh, N-I-M-O-O-S. Nemos. Small dog, yeah. Uh, the word there uh, for a cat is gosh against. Gosh against. Yeah. And that's, uh, that uh, seems to go for a big cat and a little cat. Uh, you can always say uh, gosh for a, a mature one. But uh, usually uh, there's a more of an ownership to uh, gosh when you, uh, when you have a, when you use, uh, when you have a cat. There's more ownership to it. So most of the time you'll say, Gosh, you give him. Gosh, you give him. It's my cat. Gosh, you give him. Yeah. If it's a little cat that's yours, you gosh, you can't sell. Yeah. So those, uh, once it goes into your, into here, there, you'll be able to draw it out uh, and so forth. It's the same with the, the next word, Gukush. Gukush. We have a sheep. We have a sheep. Oh, uh, yes, we did. Marsh tarnish. Marsh tarnish. Marsh tarnish. It has to do with the, 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 the fur. Mm -hmm. The wool. Marsh tarnish. Kukush. 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 Sometimes when you're uh, sitting down for your third plate of food in a Nishnabe home, you'll be called Gukush. Gukush, <laughs> 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 they'll say, you know. <laughs> there was one of uh, one of my cousins that went to a, a Tim Hortons, not a Tim Hortons, a Chinese restaurant in uh, Manitowani. And I think he went back, uh, filled up his plate four times. And finally he was cut off. <laughs> he, he was told not to come back anymore either. <laughs> he said, well, geez, that's the way it's supposed to be set up. Said, Some people only eat little wee bit. He said, I'm having what they did. <laughs> Wabus. The rabbit, wabus. Again, we're looking at um, birds here, but uh, we're going to call them uh, farm animals. Bakakwen. Bakakwen. Yeah, you got the, your, you got your, 
that you're using your nose there at the last part. Pakakwen. Pakakwen. Babun se. Rooster. 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 Yes. Uh, rooster is uh, the male, the male chicken. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the thing fast on that one. <laughs> nobody, had, nobody asked me that before. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> um, Wabus is uh, is going to be in uh, both lists. Uh, because you can catch a rabbit and tame a rabbit and it becomes a, a, a walk walk hard. And it can also be when he's running around in the bushes, uh, we, uh, we have seen. When, when there's one, one animal, it's where seen. And we're going to have talk a bunch of animals, so we're going to say where's seen. But just one is like a, a, even, a, even a dog, that's a where seen. It's, it's a dog. But uh, when it's tame and it's in your home, it's been like part of your family, so it becomes a uh, wakan. Wakan. <coughs> Makwa. Some people, the dialect difference is some people say Mkwa. Mkwa. Uh, Ojibwe will say Makwa. Ajidamu. Uh, it's a squirrel, Ajidamu. And uh, the chipmunk uh, looks the same as the squirrel, smaller, is a shingwish. Shingu shingu uh, porcupine is gawk. gawk. The deer it is wawash cash. Uh, elk is a dick. And we, there's a trick word here. Uh, some uh, some animals in this area are uh, shibju, shibju, and sure. some of them are uh, um, the one I'm talking about. Any any of these in in that term is called kuchgaja, wildcat. So uh, cougar, um, lynx, uh, all of these can be termed under kuchgaja. Uh, Bourgeois guys. Yeah, bourgeois. Remember, good. You're, you're catching on pretty fast. Shanguish. Uh, Shanguish. Shanguish. is fox. Walgush. The last one is Mahingan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost almost like a silent H, but it's there, my Inga. It's in, still in your uh, Inga. Um, <coughs> it's one of the, the Wawash and the Mingan are the, the two of the hardest ones to uh, get used to saying because uh, there's about four different dialects that we that we use in this area. And some people say Wawash. And some people say Wauxhan, and uh, the other people would say Wauxh, Wauxh, Wauxh. Again, you're forming the W without saying Wauxh. It's the Ojibwe that I know. Maingan is the same way. Uh, some people say Maingan, and uh, and some uh, some uh, uh, some of the uh, other people will say uh, uh They uh, the language is so um, is so unique that you can wild dog, right? Wild dog, yeah, yeah. Because the 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 wolf comes from the the, the dog family, so they say the gurchinim, gurchinim, and so forth. Like a page. Yeah. Yeah. Shigak. Shigak is called. Within uh, within the meaning. Of the the word gawk, uh, there is the the medicine uh, in our language. Uh, you uh, uh, je, je, the word je, it it means uh, a medicine. It means 
something that will make you uh, natural, something that bring, brings you back to natural. Uh, because uh, <coughs> there is no such thing as a disease in Ojibwe. There's really no such thing as a disease or there wasn't until uh, Jagannash came. Uh, and anytime you hear me say Jagannash, uh, some people look at it as a, uh, a, um, a, a not a good way to say that because they don't understand the word. I say Jagannash because it simply means a person from offshore. Uh, you know, so when I'm uh, when I'm mentioning someone from offshore, it means that they originated from uh, offshore. You point at me when you say. Uh, no, no. Jag to be the same thing as Z H A A K or or G, I guess. Jagnosh. Z H A A G A N A A. S-H, Yeah, some, and in some of the, again, some of the dialects, uh, people think you're, you're insulting a, a race, say Javanash. Uh, but that is the true term, that is the kindest term to our visitors, Javanash. It's like Anishinaabe. Uh, there'll be some day when I get into power, that the Indians that will be around here will be known as Nishnabe. Uh, there wouldn't be uh, anything like indigenous. Indigenous to me sounds like I'm some kind of a plant or something. You know. <laughs> Maybe I am, I don't know. But uh, that's, what it, that's what it implies in my mind, the way my mind works. That uh, indigenous means, uh, uh, you know, uh, born to the area. It's a, a plant does that. A human being doesn't, human being moves around. Uh, I identify closer to uh, uh, Nishnabe because it, it's a short form and a, a, a derived form of a, a descending man. To, to say that we are, we, uh, we originated from uh, the star people and then we became the uh, people of Atlantis and then we became uh, people of the rest of the world and uh, that is chasing the chasing our lineage of uh, having been here um, as a as a kid i listened to people uh sitting around and talking about where did we come from and they said well uh, uh we came from the stars and she says, and the people used to say, well, everyone pretty well came from the stars. Uh, we were uh, we were left here to look after this. We were kind of like an experiment. We were left behind here to to be able to grow this planet and to look after this planet. And uh, the people that left us behind are going to come back someday and look for us. I grew up with that knowledge. And I used to always look up and I just wonder where I came from. There's so many of those things up there, you know. But I had an expansion of mind uh, as a result of that. I didn't relate to the fact of uh, having evolved from uh, the apes, uh, you know, the monkeys or the apes. I said, well, maybe white man came from the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that's the way a child thinks. Right? The child would think, well, you know, I, 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 I got to listen to the adults, but they tell me. And we come from the stars, and uh, we uh, we went to Atlantis, and then we uh, we 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 went separate ways because Atlantis perished, and so we went in different directions. And um, uh, uh, evolution told me that uh, when you evolve uh, to different areas, your language changes uh, because uh, the people in the, the near the shores. Uh, they would sound different because uh, there's uh, water, there's wind, and the people in the mountains would sound different because there's echoes and uh, the air moves in a different way. And uh, the old people used to say, well, we all spoke, uh, we all spoke the mother language, 
right from the start. And uh, uh, the white people, they, they spoke a language that came from war because uh, white people, uh, the Europeans, uh, Chaganosh were always fighting. They were always fighting. It was the, it was a way of life. Uh, it was how they stayed strong to be fighting all the time. That's how they stayed strong and that's how they stayed locked up and that's how they didn't get sick. They had to have a reason to, to be around. So that's what they did. They, so they uh, put this language together and it's a language that comes from war. And a lot of our, a lot of our, uh, a lot of what we learned from the Chaganash, uh, it, uh, it was uh, something that we saw as coming from war. And uh, like even uh, the, um, the, the salute, when you salute today, that comes from when they used to wear these helmets and they would uh, show each other's eyes in combat. They would just raise their, to show respect, they would raise their face plate and that. So today they don't have the hat anymore, so they just, they just go like that. And uh, the, certain, uh, the certain way of dressing the, uh, the, the, the wallets and all that they made, it, you could see that it all came from war. The, the holsters and the things to carry and uh, the, the shields. Uh, the shields was in our, in our society. That's why you, when you offer an elder tobacco to do something, you say, would you accept this tobacco to, to do something for me? And you would say, well, what do you need to do? And then you say, well, I need you to to be able to make a pair of snowshoes for me. Would you accept this tobacco for that? And the person would say, yes, I would. And he would, he would decide which hand he's going to uh, use. And he he sees the he sees the tobacco being offered with the left, and then he would use his left too to receive it. Um, because uh, uh, when you when you show uh, take tobacco with your left, that means you you're not wearing a shield. It means you trust the person in front of you. When you have the shield down, that means you trust the person. If you uh, you yeah, offer tobacco and give with the right hand. The right hand, you're showing that you don't have a knife or a weapon in your hand. So again, you can you can be trusted, uh, and, and the person, the other person, can put his shield down and everything, and put his knife away and be able to present both uh, both hands. Uh, people always ask that, you know, when you're among, uh, if you're going uh, to ceremonies and stuff like that. People say, well, what hand do you use? And uh, why? Why do you use left or right hand? Most elders they say, "Well, you um, you you give it uh, you you give and receive it to your left because that's the side of your heart, and that's what they go by." Uh, but because uh, we too came from uh, uh, in in uh, fighting each other and uh, fighting for territory and so forth, we didn't fight for land. We fought for hunting territory, and we didn't use rivers and uh, mountains for uh, uh, for um, boundaries. We we used uh, hunting territory as boundaries. Uh, we always made sure that the other tribe had access to uh, hunting territory. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, we made medicine uh, out of uh, our neighbors. We made medicine and we, um, if there was a tribe from somewhere else that was coming into our territory, uh, then there would be a war because uh, they uh, they were coming into a controlled area where we are looking after our 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 animals and everything. So a lot of uh, a lot of the 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 things that we do it, it enters into language and it becomes a part of our uh, uh, part of our uh, language. That we use as uh, in ritual and, and so forth, and uh, a lot of the language also becomes a uh, uh, <coughs> acknowledgement, uh, acknowledgement uh, 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 habits and so forth. When I was growing up, uh, we um, I, I, I understood custom really well, and uh, we uh, when I was visiting my friends. 
because I grew up in a non-native uh, place. I grew up uh, speaking my language every night from my grandparents, but speaking English to everybody else away from my household. And uh, the customs were different here and different here. So when I went to play with my friends, uh, the owners of the, the house and the territory would say, uh, Terry and uh, Terry and Ray, you come on, come and eat now. Lorne, you go home. You know, uh, in our in our in our uh, place, uh, when it was supper time, uh, they, they, they said, "Lorne, uh, come on, come and have supper. Bring your friends," uh, because uh, there was extra extra water put in the soup or something. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, it was impolite not to. It was impolite not to not to feed. Them. My friends, because they were they were keeping me company. Uh, they came to uh, to be my company and everything, so it was impolite to, to not uh, <laughs> not offer them food. Uh, they said, uh, it, you know, it, the enemy is sent away without food. I said that's uh, they don't realize that they uh, they invented the cold shoulder. Uh, the the shogunars invented the cold shoulder, and they they that explained they explained that. Because we knew customs, we knew customs of the Jagannath in a lot of ways, but most of the time they didn't know our customs. And so, but we knew the, them because they were the visitors, and we uh, uh, we, we knew the customs that they had. And uh, there was uh, there was a language uh, uh, said spoken in that way of how Jagannath went. And they, uh, if uh, if they didn't like the company that was coming. They would, uh, they would, uh, uh, they would not warm up the fruit. So they keep, keep, give a cold shoulder of uh, meat to uh, to the visitor, and the person would eat it. All right, but uh, they knew they wouldn't be welcome back. That was the. That was the thing. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty neat to to, to learn the language uh, to uh, to be uh, with my grandparents. I had to learn the customs. Of uh, uh, us, and then the custom, uh, the Jagannath. And uh, it says, you, you, uh, if you, if you're able to have respect for uh, the people at the Jagannath, uh, you're going to be welcome pretty well everywhere. If you don't, uh, if you don't follow the customs, uh, uh, you're going to be uh, in trouble a few times because you're going to be crossing lines. So they said that you're going to be among the Jagannaths most of your life because we're not going to raise you on a reserve. We're going to get you out there to learn, to learn because this little land here is just, it's not yours. This little land here is not yours. This whole Turtle Island is yours. And we want you to grow up to understand that. And uh, so that was uh, that was the custom. And that was, okay. Lorna, this is not on your list, but... Um... What is chickadee? Chickadee, uh, uh, yeah, uh, but boon sense. Boon sense uh, is a B O O N H S E N S. Boon sense. Yeah, when you usually see a bunch of them flying around, it means it's going to snow. So they call them boon sense. Uh, there's a different name for them, right? I, 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 I quite forget what the other ones are, but there's three different names for uh, 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 chickadee. Yeah. In, in English, it's chickadee. Yeah, chickadee. Before that is because they actually, their song is chickadee dee dee dee. Yeah. And so it, it's, I can't think what that's called. It's the, there's a term for that. Okay. Boon sense. Thank you. The boon sense, yeah. Yeah, the. Like or something? Something like uh, I was going to say that, uh, and I can't remember what it is, but I know that I learned uh, the chickadee, um, it has the same in the Schnabelwin that uh, it, where it has that sound, but you know, uh, because the bird speaking uh, Schnabelwin instead of English, it makes a slightly different sound, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. The listener, um, um, but it does the exact same thing. I can't remember what it is. Uh, yeah, it's there. It's just, uh, it's, uh, uh, oh, geez. It's almost there. I know it's, it's in there, but I can't find it. <laughs> Thanks, so. Thank, but you're absolutely right. 
like owl. It sounds like what it sound says. Yeah, right? yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. How about um, raccoons? Uh, uh, it's a G O O K O O K O O. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the funny thing about Kukuku, uh, because of uh, again because of war, uh, when uh, Jagannath uh, used to use Kukuku, uh, make it the sound of a uh, uh to uh, to signal, uh, the Nishnabe always knew what was going on, and they could tell the difference between a. Uh, uh, Gukuku, and uh, no matter how good, no matter how good uh, the Shagunash was in being able to imitate an owl, uh, the Nishnabe always knew that it was an imitation, uh, simply because the the real the real Gukuku, when he when he caught when when he calls at night, there's no echo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if it's a man that's calling and using the the sound. There's uh, there's uh, there's an echo, yeah. So they always knew. <laughs> and the other one was uh, where we had the uh, uh, put up uh, ahead was the um, uh, the when the, when the, we were living standing in ambush, uh, we would always be concentrating on a rock. We would put a rock in front of us, and we'd be looking at that rock. Somebody way up way up on a high mountain someplace else. On a high hill would be the lookout, and uh, they uh, they would uh, they would uh, they would be watching, and uh, they would uh, uh, they would uh, throw a, throw a, a rock in a certain direction uh, to flush uh, flush the birds over there, and that is how we knew that they were close close by because you'd never you wouldn't think you wouldn't. Uh, uh, think of the people. You wouldn't. You wouldn't look at the the people that were you're going to ambush because the moment you set your eyes on them, they would know. They would know the moment you saw them. They would know, and we knew this uh, because energy travels. Energy is all over, and energy travels. And uh, it's it's it, today when you're walking down the street uh, and you and you and you have that feeling somebody's watching me. And you look, and sure enough, there's somebody watching you. Mm -hmm. It probably happens to you quite often if you're walking in a busy place. You, know, you, you get that feeling, somebody watching you. You just look, and you can look right at the person that's uh, that's watching you. So uh, a lot of those things that were uh, because we had uh, studied uh, we had studied that for so long that we it was an automatic thing. Yeah. Um, the, a lot of times the the person. If, you, if the person is walking towards you and you feel uncomfortable, all you got to do is look at his eyes and look down at his hands and look back up again. If his eyes are still connected with yours when you look back up, you know that that person is going to do something or try thinking of doing something. It's, a, it's, all, it's all in the, when you're a little guy, you learn all these things because uh, you see the, especially if you're raised alone, like I was raised by myself with my grandparents. And uh, I knew I knew all the laws by the time I was uh, seven years old. I knew all the laws of our people uh, because I was I had I was I had to um, uh, go with my grandfather whenever he went to a meeting someplace. I would have to come because that was the old practice. Uh, that is how we uh, we uh, we gathered uh, information. So uh, and because there was no I had no brothers or sisters. There's nobody. To argue with, and uh, so the information I get was the information I carried. And uh, people say, "Well, how come you know all this?" And I say, "Well, I had to go to meetings, I had to go to uh, uh, visits, and so forth. I uh, I knew a lot of things. Like when, uh, I'll give you an example, I guess is when uh, a few years back, I think it was in '94 uh, or something." I knew uh, a lady uh, uh, went to court to uh, to, to uh, demand equality for women. So when before, when a man married a, a white woman, he could take that woman on the reserve. 
because uh, uh, the, 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 man, the land was safe. And when a man, when a, a man, a, man, a woman married a, a Shogunosh, uh, they couldn't go back. He had to stay off the reserve. Uh, and uh, it had nothing to do with gender. It had to do with the respect of the white man. The respect of the white man was wherever he went, he changed everything. Uh, he did things to, um, to make money. Uh, he would, uh, it wouldn't be very long before he, uh, he kind of took over a, a great big area because he made a big area to, to do what he did. And so they, uh, they said, well, if we, if we allow this Shogunosh to, uh, uh, Shogunoshi quite to bring a white man onto our land, it won't be long before we don't have land anymore. Because that is how it'll, it'll, it'll work. It's proved itself time and time again now, because uh, even on um, our reserve, uh, uh, there's about 3,000 cars that go onto the reserve uh, each day because uh, uh, we can uh, we can uh, um, sell tobacco, and uh, and uh, and now that everybody's got familiar with the land, they uh, they are able to uh, also visit and everything. There's a bus that goes out there now and everything. It, 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 everything changes. See? So the, the old people they knew these things because they uh, they uh, that is the the ambition, the ambition of uh, of uh, the race that's visiting us is to to grow. It's always to grow. It's ambition. It's not a bad thing, but it's the thing that uh, it'll change. It'll change who who we are. It'll change everything. And so that's what happened. So that's one of the biggest teachings that I had when I was a kid. Um, you uh, you have to be careful what you're going to be doing. It'll change people around you. And I thought of that. I was one of the first people I was, uh, because of my nature and everything, I was one of the first people that was uh, confronted on my First Nation by uh, uh, people from down south. Uh, I said, Lorne, build up a shack and we'll make you rich. And I said, well, I can't. I can't do that. He said, why not? And I said, well, I said, I'm going to be a pipe carrier and tobacco as a medicine. I can't do that. And they said, well, you know, you don't have to do it long. You just got to do it a couple of years. And, you know, you, you, you know, and uh, somebody's going to do it anyway. And I said, well, no, at least it's not me. Because you're also told why you don't do that. Because you, there is uh, such a thing as a karma. And, uh, you know, when you're selling something that's going to hurt somebody, it's going to, it's going to affect you. And so I thought, well, I can't do that. Money, uh, money was, you know, even, even today, people say, well, you know, you could still do I say, yeah, I could. And I would make a heck of a lot of money because I know how to do business. And, and so for, I ran a business and, and it grew so fast that I had to expand within a year. Uh, it's just that when you're growing up in a different community and there's all kinds of races of people, you learn all kinds of things. Uh, you learn all kinds of things like when you work on a, an Italian construction company, you learn a whole, a whole culture. And when you go to a, a school with Finn people, again, you learn a whole different culture. I learned how to speak Finn before I learned how to speak English. <laughs> and I said, man, I got to you know, I still know it all. <laughs> go on home, kid. <laughs> you know what I mean, kid? <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> and I, I didn't take it, uh, I didn't take it to, to heart or anything, it's just, uh, that was just what they did to send me home. So, um, <clears throat> the person that was teaching me how to teach this language, he was telling me to teach uh, these uh, these facts, these things, and say them in a way that I wouldn't be insulting anybody, and uh, I would uh, I would uh, be able to uh, uh, give uh, reason reason for carrying the language. Uh, you need to have a reason to carry a language and you have to, uh, and a new understanding of life because uh, you literally have to change your mind to carry another language. And uh, <coughs> that's uh, 
uh, when we uh, first start, a lot of times I will, uh, on uh, on our First Nation working with kids, I will I will do the meditation. I present the meditation pretty well almost every class, so that uh, there is a place always growing inside where you're going to put that language and uh, the the habits and everything. Uh, you have to develop a neural path in your head to understand the language that's coming in. Once the language that's coming in, once that room is there, the language will go there. there there's no effort in learning a language. It's, it's just a matter of knowing how to store that. Uh, if you see a person that's learning a language, you'll see them. They'll either be looking to the right or to the left. And that's where they're storing that. Uh, that's where they're storing that thing. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they get pretty fast at it. Any other comments from uh, anybody else uh, on Zoom or here? Good morning. I really quickly tried to look up Chickadee. Mm -hmm. This G G G G G Ganeshine ring a bell? Yeah, I've heard the name, but uh, I just wondered if there was a chickadee that sounded like chickadee. Chickenashi. Chichiganashi. Yeah, that's that's that sounds like that sounds like that. Chichiganashi, yes, that's that sounds uh, pretty close to that. The, the, Yes, Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You're going to learn that language better than me. I don't think it's chess. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times when you're learning the language, you, uh, your mind expands. And uh, um, somebody once told me that anybody with that. Uh, Two languages in English vocabulary is automatically a little bit further in knowledge than the person with one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you run into a Anishinaabe that speaks to English, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, questions? Or that? Thanks for that. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's what it is. Tijiganeshi. I have heard that before. It's woken up in there. Good. <laughs> I'm a witch.